Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I think this is part five of uh, terror and part two of hell. Uh, do you know that hell was created for the devil and his angels? I am of the opinion that in the original creation, there was no hell before Adam and Eve and when uh, the angels were originally created. I don't think there was a hell. But uh, let's take a look at something. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31. When the Son of Man, Christ, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Ah, holy angels. See, there's holy angels, and then there's unholy angels. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, because he defeated hell and death for the children of Adam. And before him shall be gathered all nations, same word as Gentiles. Oh, yeah. Do you know he's going to gather all the Gentiles? Same word. You got to divide the word Gentiles. Um, the modern use of the word Gentile, they'll tell you means, oh, non Jew. But the Bible doesn't know, doesn't mean that. Sometimes it's talking about the nations or Gentiles of Israel. Sometimes it's talking about the heathen Gentile nations. So you got to read the context. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now guess what? Goats are born as goats. Just because a goat believes in the Lord doesn't turn him magically into a sheep. Goats are goats and sheep are sheep. Now a sheep can act like a goat, but it's still a sheep. And it might end up in the place where the goats end up, but it's still a sheep. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. You know, those right wingers, but the goats on the left. Isn't it funny how the symbolism of the Satanists is a goat? Oh, yeah. And aren't they always called the left? See, they get this from the Bible. They know who they are and what they are. They know. Uh, churchgoers don't, but they do. You know what's really sad is when Satanists and those men that like to be with men that put it in the wrong place, uh, know the Bible, what the Bible says better than churchgoers. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it? So the sheep are going to be on the right hand and the goats are on the left. They're at verse 34, Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, was the kingdom prepared before the earth? Well, from the very beginning of when the earth was created, was it done because the Lord knew that the earth uh, would fall into sin? Is that what it means? That there was a kingdom prepared from the very beginning of the earth being formed before sin entered into the world? Because sin didn't enter into the world until uh, somewhere between, well, Genesis 2 and 3, in my opinion. Or is it saying that the sheep were prepared to inherit the kingdom from the foundation of the world? Do you know that before Christ was even born in human flesh, he was already prepared to be a sheep for the slaughter? 
A sacrifice to the Father for sin? Oh, yeah. So, the sheep, verse 35. Uh, for I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. You know what? Read James chapter 2. This ties in James chapter 2. And you know who James had a guy that was a brother in the flesh. His name was Jesus. Yeah. And he had a uh, mother and father named Mary and Joseph. So I think James knew a couple things about the Bible. Then 37, then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. I wonder if Jesus ever got sick on this earth. You think he ever got COVID-19? I wonder. I doubt it. But... I don't know. Verse 41. Then shall he, the king, say also unto them on the left hand. Oh, here's the left. Depart from me, ye cursed, cursed, into everlasting fire. That sounds like hell, don't it? But if you listen to Jehovah's Witnesses, hell doesn't exist. Well, I don't listen to them. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The flames of hell were prepared for the devil and his angels. They were not originally made for Adam until Adam decided to follow Eve's lead and uh, do whatever dirty deed it was that they did, which is a whole other can of worms that I don't really want to get into. Verse 42, Jesus says, For I wasn't hungered, and ye gave me no meat. Yeah, I was hungry, and you stepped right over me. You didn't even bother to give me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was in the desert and didn't have any water, and you... You wouldn't even bother to give me a glass of water. I was a stranger and you took me not in, naked and you clothed me not. Can you imagine being naked in the winter? Oof. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Read James chapter 2. What you do will prove what you believe. Verse 44, then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. See, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Now we're going to take a look at Isaiah 14. And do you know that it talks about Lucifer? And there's people that will tell you, oh, Lucifer doesn't belong in the Bible because it's a Latin word. Well, quit saying taco because it's a Spanish word and it doesn't belong in the English language. You know, and... In the NIV and the complete Jewish Bible, a Messianic Jewish Bible, they take the word Lucifer and they insert the word Morning Star. Okay, but then when you go to Revelation chapter 22, guess who says he's the Morning Star? Jesus. 
So what are they trying to tell you? That they say that Jesus is basically Lucifer? Yeah, that's the NIV. That's the uh, Messianic Jewish Bible by David Stern. He wants you to think that your Messiah is Lucifer. Yeah. And oh, by the way, the NIV uh, parent company, well, the, that has the exclusive print rights, is Zondervan. Zondervan's owned by HarperCollins. HarperCollins prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, and HarperCollins also prints The Joy of Gay Sex, a how-to manual. Uh, I've never read it, no desire to read it, um, don't want to read it. But guess who their parent company is? The News Corp. News Corp is commonly known as Fox Television, the Fox TV network. Yeah, one big happy family. So if you want to read the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, just turn on Fox Television. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So with that in mind, let's take a look at Isaiah 14, where it talks about Lucifer going to the pit of hell. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Hello, this is a quick commentary on Isaiah 14. The uh, modern Bibles like to take liberties and the deceivers love to explain away some of the important things in Isaiah 14. All right, so let's start in Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to her place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Listen carefully. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Um, when the Medes and the Persians, well, let's go back for history. Jerusalem did a lot of wicked stuff. God got angry, and if you read the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations, God sent Babylon to be his rod of correction against Jerusalem for their wickedness. Well, after a certain period of time, uh, 70 years, if memory serves me correctly, God had the Medes and the Persians who conquered Babylon, and then they let the uh, tribe of Judah, the Jews, you could say, return back to Jerusalem to rebuild. All right. So that's what this is talking about. You know, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay. If you have ever read the book of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the book of Daniel, you read about King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, 
He that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing. Now, obviously, these are figures of speech because trees can't say things and they can't rejoice. Trees don't have emotion. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing. Sounds thou art laid down. No feller is come up against us. Now, a feller is a, you know, an axe man, you know, a, a lumberjack, you know, because they fell the trees. <clears throat> Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Listen carefully. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? Now, here it is before they were talking about the king of Babylon. And if you read the modern commentaries and your modern Bibles, they'll say, oh, this is talking about the king of Babylon. But when did an earthly king fall from heaven? When? Never. Never. And then they'll explain away, oh, Lucifer, that's a, that's a terrible mistranslation. Well, they got that from the Latin Vulgate Bible, okay? And the word Lucifer has reference to being a light bearer. Uh, matter of fact, L-U, to this day, has reference to light. You've heard of lux, lumens, like illuminated, illum illuminati. L-U uh, is, a, is a Latin word that has reference to light. Um, you know, so basically Lucifer means light bearer. Have you ever read where in the Bible where it says, for no marvel, for Say, um, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Okay. Matter of fact, let me look that up. Okay, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You ever noticed all the, um, what is it, the Mayans and the Aztecs, the Incas, the Egyptians, they all worship the sun god, not S-O-N, but the S-U-N. Satan is an angel of light, but his light is darkness, so. All right, so let's continue Isaiah 14:12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? Listen carefully. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So, you know, this can't be an earthly king of Babylon. I mean, he fell from heaven. Okay. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Didn't the Bible say that um, hell was created for the Satan and his angels? 16. 
they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. Mm. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare, oof, wow, listen to this. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Doesn't sound like cities are a good place to be, huh? A lot of wickedness in cities. Um, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess a land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. See, Babylon was totally destroyed. The city was destroyed, and it's never been inhabited even to this day. Verse 23. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, B-I-T-T-E-R-N. It's a type of bird. And pools of water. Uh, the bittern is a, a water bird, sort of like an egret. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A besom is a type of broom. If you were to take a stick and straw and make a homemade broom, you know, you would take the straw, wrap it around the stick, and then wrap it with string, you would have basically the straw would be like in a cylinder shape it would be kind of a roundish shape not round like a ball just the outline so that when you sweep the floor um, it's not wide and straight like a regular broom but that's what a besom is i will also make it a possession for the bittern and pulls of water and i will sweep it with the besom of destruction so the Lord's going to sweep it with a like a broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, <laughs> you think about it. What do you use a broom for? You use it to clean the house and get, sweep the dirt and the filth and the garbage out of the house, right? And that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to sweep it with his broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his, his burden depart from off their shoulders. Now, um, the Assyrians took the northern ten tribes of Israel who are not the same as the Jews. Okay, The Assyrians took the ten northern tribes into captivity. And when the Assyrians collapsed, the ten tribes, um, they, they, they took off. I mean, they just, you know. Uh, when the Assyrian army collapsed, the northern tribes of Israel hightailed it out of Dodge, you could say. They never did return to the land. They scattered. And when you talk about the, the ten lost tribes, this is what you're talking about. However, Assyria couldn't conquer Jerusalem. 
and all of Judah. And northern Israel and, and southern Judah are not the same. Israel and Judah is not the same. They had different kings, different land area. They even fought wars against each other. Think about the United States Civil War, the North and the South. Yes, they were both Americans. But if you called somebody from the South a Yankee from New York, they might cut your throat. I mean, you know. Somebody from Georgia is not the same as somebody from New York. They both might be Americans, but Southerners and Northerners, it was the same type of deal here with Israel. So the Assyrians took the northern tribes of Israel into captivity, and then they never returned to the land. But because they couldn't conquer Judah and Jerusalem, uh, later Babylon came, and they did conquer Jerusalem, and they took, they killed a lot of the Jews, they killed many of them, and then took some of them into captivity. Seventy years later, the Medes and the Persians came, conquered Babylon, and then the Jews were allowed to return to Jerusalem to rebuild it. And But the thing was, is when Assyria collapsed, when the Assyrians collapsed, they Israel never returned to the land. And to the modern theologians, northern Israel is lost. God didn't lose his people, but the modern church world has lost them. All right, so, 25. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, that then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice thou, rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. This is where you get the word Palestine. Okay. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. That's a wild verse. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay the rem thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina, art dissolved, for there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. All right, that's the end. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. Amen.